All right, I, this will, I think we can do this reasonably expeditiously. Uh, so uh, Northwestern will be hosting the GM5 meeting in Bethesda. Please make note of the dates. It'll be the 28th and 29th. So unfortunately, that means travel on Memorial Day for people that uh, observe Memorial Day uh, weekend. Um, as Terry alluded to, and as you just sort of heard, saw, saw a preview of, initially the plan had been to think about using this to explore international genomic medicine implementation projects. But uh, just due to the closeness of Memorial Day weekend to now, and the fact that none of the international groups had actually been contacted at this point, we decided it actually probably made more sense to delay that for GM6, because there's probably a little more lead time when international groups are involved, and really focus on wrapping up what's really been a two-year process. So this meeting will be happening very close to two years after the original uh, GM, I guess we're calling it GM colloquium, not GM1, since we heard about that earlier. Um, so what we want to really do is see if we can summarize the four meetings that have been uh, held since that initial, or the four, including the initial colloquium, and try to come together and review what it is that we've learned from engaging this wide variety of, of stakeholders. You know, we've effectively talked about many of the places that are doing implementation projects. Uh, we've talked about uh, integrating with payers, and we've had, you've heard a lot about the payer meeting and, and some of the work that was done on that. Uh, you've heard a lot about the project, the uh, funding opportunities that NHGRI has put out uh, based on the discussions in this group. Uh, I think we'll have some clarity by that meeting of who some of those awardees are likely to be. Uh, and we've had this meeting where we've really had, I thought, a really good discussion about what the role of societies were and how do we think about education for the various stakeholders, whether they're patients or whether they're uh, physicians or other healthcare providers. And so what we want to do is use this meeting as a chance to sort of revisit that and refocus our energies going forward on what makes sense to do. One of the other things I think that's very clear that came out of this meeting was that there is probably additional discussion to be had with the societies around the idea of uh, clinical practice guidelines, best practice uh, guidelines, and uh, other levels of uh, maybe non uh, randomized controlled trial based or evidentiary based approaches since we're very early in the game. And so I think we still want to use uh, this meeting as an opportunity to maybe have a discussion about some of those issues in the context of how do we move forward in terms of filling the pipeline to get us to the place where we're actually able to have some clinical implementations that are uh, maybe even able to be funded by payers and to uh, uh, be more broadly assessed for their outcomes. Since the meeting will be held in uh, the Washington, D.C. area, one of the other things we thought was a great opportunity for this meeting was to engage the key federal partners. Uh, we have had several of the federal partners have people in attendance at these meetings, but um, we'd really like to think about uh, what are the opportunities with things like um, ARC, I guess that's just not showing up, um, CDC, CMS, FDA, DOD, we've had uh, good participation from uh, the Air Force at a number of our meetings. Um, VA is another one that uh, wasn't on this list where we've had some, some good participation. We'd like to re-engage. They have big plans. And then obviously as we think about outcomes, PCORI seems like a very important partner in terms of thinking about what should genomic medicine look like going forward. And, and I'm sure there are others and would welcome suggestions from you uh, in, in a minute about uh, what those others might look like. And then in addition to those groups outside of NIH, there's a variety of groups inside of NIH that we'd like to reach out to and see if we can engage at this meeting, in including NCATS, one of the partners that's always made a lot of sense, I think, for us as we think about genomic medicine is the network of 
CTSA awardees and what they may be able to bring to the table. Uh, I know that uh, in Emerge, most of the Emerge uh, consortium members are also affiliated with uh, CTSAs. And so we think that trying to leverage that and what NCAT's goals are going forward uh, makes a lot of sense. We, we heard uh, quite a bit today about um, cancer. And so engaging with uh, NCI in, in a more formal way seems like it makes a, a lot of sense, as well as heart, lung, and blood. Those are some of the key stakeholders where genomic medicine seems like an early and initial uh, uh, good source for, for interactions. And then even though it's really focused on um, more fundamental studies, uh, NIGMS is also funds a lot of genomics work. And, so it would make sense for us to engage them to the extent that they're ready. They're uh, in the process of changing leadership. And so hopefully that'll be maybe a little clarified by then. And then to invite anybody else from NIH that makes a lot of sense. So this is sort of the outline of what we're thinking about for the, uh, this, this May meeting. And so maybe I'll stop there and see if that resonates with people, see if People have suggestions for other stakeholders that should be involved or uh, for people that we've missed that aren't on these lists. So, so we have uh, Jean here first, I think. Uh, child, child health is particularly interested in this. That should be on the list on for sure. So we have Joan um, and then Chris and Alan. Uh, I was just going to suggest uh, that HRSA may play uh, a role in, in, uh, in being here. Great, great suggestion. Yeah, I just want to um, say that uh, for the Air Force side, the DOD component, we've had a lot of interest from the Navy in uh, kind of picking up our current study. And probably by that, by that May time frame, we should know um, what that implementation is going to look like and what their level of involvement will be. So they might be another good partner. Oh, that would, that would actually be, uh, I think, a really nice extension. So, so you're actually effectively talking with the Navy. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's pretty, <laughs> pretty unbelievable. Well, they want all things joint right now, so it's kind of working in our favor. Excellent. <laughs> Great. Uh, Alan? Uh, Chris, maybe you mentioned this already, but I think reengaging the EHR vendors uh, would be a good idea for this meeting since we've heard that's a real bottleneck for many of us. I can just, you know, uh, obviously Rex gave a very abbreviated um, summary of this. Um, I'm not absolutely certain that, that that would be the right venue for this particular meeting, given that, that in some ways some of the output of this is going to be uh, looking forward to the international meeting that we're going to hear about, which may have less to do with some of the on-the-ground EHR. But I think it is something that's important for us to consider as a planning group to say, you know, at what point do we uh, need to bring that up as a prioritized topic. Yeah, it may be, for example, um, as Josh mentioned, uh, Emerge is engaged with the EHR vendors and had them at a meeting really around that general topic. It, it may be that a second round of meeting with them through Emerge uh, and then eventually, and obviously through Emerge and its growing collaboration with PGRN might make sense for a uh, place to have that discussion and then a, a report back in the future. So we have, I think, Pearl, then Jonas, then John. Um, I'm a little hesitant to offer these, but uh, just because I, we refer to them commonly, I was just wondering about Office of Civil Rights for HIPAA. Should they just know what we're talking about? And maybe even more tangentially with the Office of Human Research Protections. But I think, you know, not as a speaker, but... Yeah, it's, it's a... It's, it's, There's it's, sand in the gears. Yeah, you know, and, and it's an interesting time for them because, you know, as you know, with the advance notice of proposed rulemaking um, and with, I think, increasing uncertainty about where that advance notice is heading, although maybe somebody else in this room knows more. Last I heard, there was increasing uncertainty about the time frame for the implementation of that. Um, I don't know if that's actually a good time or an awkward time to engage them. So I think it's an interesting point for discussion. Yeah. I mean, one thing with OHP, um, in the context of the uh, Secretary's Advisory Committee of Genetics, Health, and Society, when we invited them to come about the specific issues about lack of clarity around family history data, they actually took that back and, and created a 
uh, statement about the family history data, which was actually much more liberal than any of us would have ever imagined that they would have come up with. And so I think if there are targeted issues that we've identified that fall under their purview, where we could, you know, explain the problem to them and say, if you can provide any clarification or assistance, they might well act on that. Yeah, there was a, uh, in conjunction with a recent, or well, I guess a year ago, Emerge meeting, there was also a um, uh, data sharing, return of results discussion, and they actually did send representatives who participated very actively in both of those, in, in those discussions, and so there's certainly willingness on their part, and I just, the question is whether this is the right time or not, and, uh, but we, that should be, the planning group will certainly discuss that and reach out to them and see if that makes sense. Uh, Jonas? Since there are some non-trivial big data governance issues in, in, in this sort of uh, framework, it would be interesting to bring the NSF big data and data sciences people. So just a suggestion. John? Um, um, uh, many of us would be interested in the financing of trying to get genomic medicine implementation to work. And so I'd like to learn more, <clears throat> more about the third party payers and uh, how people have solved that problem around the country and what works and what doesn't, and I don't see that on your list. Sounds like we need a 14-day meeting. Yeah, it does. <laughs> well, I think to some degree, John, we, we tried to address that in, at GM3, but more at the payers meeting. Um, and so we would have some review and status from one to four, maybe not, I mean, that's a topic unto itself um, that could take several days. Uh, and and so, so maybe we can touch on it. I'm not sure that we can do it in May. Um, we may want to think about having some kind of a separate effort or some subsequent effort for that. But, um, but maybe we can work with you on kind of identifying what are the, the key issues that could be addressed in sort of a sub-segment um, in May. If that well, I, and I think a related piece is that there's still quite a few, as you, as you heard from uh, Derek earlier, there's still quite a few outstanding issues from the payers meeting. And so it may be that at this meeting we'll be able to report on what some of those outstanding issues from the payers meeting are, and that'll set the stage, who knows, for genomic medicine seven or eight. HERS is a key education partner, so I don't know if you thought about inviting them or having some discussions with them. Well, keep in, in mind, yeah, before Marin and Jeff, maybe you could, you could head up to the podium. Um, keep in mind that where we're trying to go, at least what, what was proposed, was to unify our efforts in, in the U.S., genomic medicine implementation, so that then we could present more of a united effort in, in September or whenever we meet with the, with the foreign folks. So, so yes, right. So, so HRSA would be, would be one of those. But it sounded like you were trying to take us further than that. Just, just HRSA. Okay. I would say from the VA, I know you've invited the folks that are responsible for Million Veterans Program and the bio lab side of the Office of Research and Development, but you might want to consider inviting David Atkins, who's the lead for the Health Services Research and Development part, and that's where I get my funding from VA to do implementation research and so forth. And um, he also used to be the director of AHRQ, as you may know, so he's kind of a pretty savvy guy. And um, Seth Eisen, who just left that position, I think he's been charged with trying to look at the Million Veterans Program and how it might relate to kind of assessing outcomes, et cetera, so especially with our EHR and all that. So Seth Eisen might be somebody as well. Great. Thanks. Any other comments? Wonderful. Thank you, Rex. You, you milked that one slide for all it's worth. So, <laughs> great. And then last but not least, by far, uh, <laughs> Jeff.